Two weeks after the incident, a body washes up in a river near Boulogne. A wristwatch appears to confirm that this is the missing tycoon. Unless that wristwatch is a deliberate deception. Officially, the case was swiftly closed. The inquest verdict, accidental death, meant that the insurance claims were paid. The bulk of the Lowenstein estate was inherited by his widow, Madeleine. Nobody was arrested or openly accused of criminal activity. According to Giles Milton, Alfred Lowenstein's funeral was the one promised to Scrooge by the ghost of Christmas yet to come. A notable no-show was widow Madeline. She inherited the bulk of her husband's fortune, but arranged for his burial in her family tomb. His name was not carved on the tombstone, an unmarked grave in effect. Lowenstein may have been unmourned, but he has certainly not been forgotten. For nearly a hundred years, amateur sleuths have poured over the details of what happened over the channel that fateful evening. Essentially, there are four possibilities. An accident, suicide, premeditated murder, or an elaborate fake. The first two options were considered by the subsequent inquest. They both rely on the possibility that one man could have pushed open the door marked exit, either deliberately or in error. Both the pilot and the mechanic assured the court that this was perfectly feasible. But later tests by the British Air Ministry demonstrated that it would be impossible for this door to be opened by accident. And so impossible then, and almost so for suicide. Unless, of course, that suicide was assisted, which seems extremely unlikely. Murder is by far the most probable explanation, and a conspiracy almost certain. There's not much that can be hidden from six people packed together in a tiny plane. Was Alfred pushed through that door marked exit? If so, by whom? Fascination has been amplified by a cast of suspects straight from an Agatha Christie novel. A loyal valet, a dubious pilot, a femme fatale wife, a trigger-happy son. Many fingers have pointed at widow Madeline, but she was not on the aircraft. Was the hit carried out on her orders? In his book, The Man Who Fell From The Sky, William Morris fingers Pilot Drew as the man shoving his boss into eternity, with Madeline pulling the strings in Brussels. Others suggest a murder on the Orient Express style collective homicide. Or was it an elaborate fake, a conspiracy cooked up by the Lowensteins and involving their staff? Apparently Lowenstein had crossed the notoriously vengeful gangster Arnold Rothstein and needed to disappear. Or perhaps he did a Robert Maxwell, jumping from a plane rather than a yacht to escape his collapsing business empire. And what about that door marked exit? Was it replaced on board the plane? or on the beach, before the hapless Inspector Clouseau arrived. Welcome to the wacky rabbit hole of the man who fell to earth. Questions linger heavy, tycoon's final flight, whispers of